Hi, Jason from Valley here again. Uh, gonna go over a pilot this time. Uh, I am sitting inside a touring pilot. Obviously, you could have a different pilot, but this has every accessory in it. So as I go along, you can pick and choose what is on your personal vehicle. But basically, I do these videos just to do a refresher of buttons in case things weren't explained to you. Uh, this is how I go over delivery um, after someone purchases a vehicle for me. We sit inside the vehicle and take a half an hour, 45 minutes to make sure that they feel comfortable. And this is basically a um, the what I do uh, uh, after you purchase the vehicle to make sure that you understand the buttons and the features. In the touring, you have backup sensors. You can obviously add this uh, as a dealer installed option on the other uh, pilots like the LX, the EX, the EXL. Uh, but on the Touring, it's standard. It actually has front sensors as well, uh, uh, part of the Touring package. But this one has backup sensors, and basically you have a button that you can turn off the sensor. So if you did not want them to come on, if you were purposely backing up to something and didn't want the, uh, the warning signals to go off, you could turn it off there. This is your vehicle stability assist. And basically what it does is uh, when you're on the road and you hit a wet or an icy surface, it won't let you spin the tires. So uh, on the rare occasion that you wanted the tires to spin, sort of going up or down a snowy driveway, if you wanted to rock out of deep snow or mud, you would hold this button in for two seconds. And then on the dash, it would reproduce this picture on the dash and you would have temporary free, sp free spinning wheels uh, to get where you got to go. Once you turn the car off or hold this button in again for two seconds, it'll reset back to being on. This is your emergency brake release. On this car, you set it with your foot, pull it there, down below, that's your gas door release, and right there where your foot would rest to the left of it, that is your uh, hood release. Down here, on anything that is leather and up, you're going to get a power lift gate. Here, I'll show you. You can do this a couple different ways, but inside the car, you just hold in that button. See? In the same way, if you want to put it down, hold the button in. And there you go. And if there is a kid underneath, uh, it will pop back up, and if it hits the roof of your garage, it will pop back down, so you'll do minimal damage. Uh, part of this package has memory seats, and on the back of your keys, you have a one and a two. So you take one, you give one to your spouse, you set your seat. If you have number one, you hit set, one, and then it'll keep it at number one. When you get in the car and unlock the door, it'll reset back to you. Power mirrors. Flip it to the left, up, down, left, right. Does this mirror. Flip it to the right. Does that mirror. Back is unlocked for the doors, forward is lock. Or you can just hit the switch. Power windows. You have auto down in the front driver's side and the front passenger side. Hit it one time, it goes all the way down. The back are manual. But the nice thing is, if you have your kids sticking their heads out the window, when you when it senses any pressure, it goes right back down so they can't get hurt. If you want to lock off the windows, push it down, and then only the driver's side window will work. Um, let's see. Up on the dash, you have tachometer, dash lights, clockwise for brighter, counterclockwise for dimmer, miles per hour fuel gauge. If you ever forget what side the gas door is on, there's a little arrow pointing to this side of the car so you know it's on the driver's side. Heat to cool. And then obviously, what gear you're in. There is a little button right down here next to the D. That'll, that'll lock you out of overdrive and put you down into D3. Okay. In the center part here, this is part of the touring package. These buttons right here will let you toggle through that screen. So you can customize your settings. Um, this was always tricky for me. But you can basically pick what you want to do. This is up and down, and this is select. So if you wanted to select your trip computer, you go up and down, and then put this to select it. And then you can pick the instant fuel economy. You can flip through your outside fuel. And that's all while using this button back here. 
oil life, trip A, and if you want to reset this, hold this button in, and then it resets back. Outside temperature, trip B, push it in to reset it. So you can basically do everything from here. And part of the touring package, you can also see your range to empty, but you can also, let me find it, you can also check your tire pressure and this will actually tell you exactly what the tire pressure is in each tire. Uh, on the LX, EX, EXL, it doesn't say this. It just gives you that, that little um, that little U with an exclamation point if one of your tires is low. But the Touring actually gives you the tire pressure in each tire. That's pretty cool, I think. Right here, this is pick up and hang up for your phone. This is call by voice, and this is go back if you messed it up. So when you see someone calling, once you program in your phone, you'll see their name come up up there. You pick up here, you hang up here, call by voice here, go back here. This is your mode that lets you flip between AM, FM, CD, XM, Bluetooth, right here without taking your hands off the steering wheel, volume up and down. This also works when you're listening to someone talk on the phone. Um, you can turn their volume up and down if you can't hear them. Uh, this is your change your channel when you program all your favorite radio stations into here It'll let you go through your favorites and when you're listening to the CD or the hot the H the hard disk drive or the CD You can actually go through the tracks Without taking your eyes off the road Cruise is pretty simple set cruise on it'll say cruise main then you run it right off these controls set accelerate Cancel but you got to turn this on to get any of that to work your horn is anywhere in here. Just hit the middle of it. Down here, your tilt wheel is in the back. Flip it down. And then you can adjust in or out, up or down. When you get it where you like it, just pull this back up. On pilots with power seats, this bar, this bar right here, you can pull it up, push it down, tilt it like a rocking chair, slide it forward, slide it back. And then there's a bar back here, which is the back of the seat. And then your lumbar, forward to, to inflate, back to deflate. Up top, map lights, push them to turn them on and off. Right here is your interior lights. You can basically have three settings. Off all the time, on with the doors, or on all the time. The ones back there are all manual, so if your kids leave a light on, if you don't want to reach back, you can temporarily shut them off by flipping that forward, and then you can get it the next time you're in the back, if you don't want to reach back there. Um, also, your moonroof. It's a one touch. Hit it once. Hit it again to stop it. If you want to close it, slide it forward and if your hand or head gets caught it will pop back so your kids don't get hurt if you just want to pop it if you just want to get a little airflow push it but remember you can still close this with that being open so it doesn't rain in there make sure you slide it forward these here are your garage door openers this will mimic your, instead of having to put a garage door opener up here, you can mimic them with the home link. The way you initially do it, push the two outside buttons and hold them until the light inside the house flashes. And when it flashes, that means they're all reset. And then what you do is you take the garage door opener and push the button on the garage door opener while pushing what, pro, what button you want to program. So if, like your side of the car, your spouse's side of the car and you know work you just hold the button in at the same time until that light flashes fast again then that means it caught it this is your mic for the Bluetooth so you don't have to yell at the steering wheel you just talk normal it'll pick you up this is an auto dimming mirror as long as uh, someone high beams you it'll automatically dim the mirror there's no little flip down here anymore these are your hazard lights in case you get a flat tire Down here is your four-wheel drive. On this, on this pilot, it's automatic four-wheel drive. You don't have to do anything. But under the rare circumstances where you needed low-range four-wheel drive, 
this button won't do anything when you're in park uh, or drive but in reverse one or two you can do a 50 50 four wheel drive where it will uh, it will lock everything in low range and like I said it'll work in one two in reverse but once you go into drive it goes back to automatic Your radio controls, push to turn your radio on here, volume, All right. and then over here is a manual tune for the radio stations. If you like this station and you want it to be at number one, push and hold it in, it'll beep. You have six on FM1, six more on FM2, and six on AM, six on XM1, six more on XM2. CD to listen to the CD and then this is the hard drive when you put a CD in it will ask you if it's a store-bought CD it can't be um, a burn CD or an iTunes uh, you know Apple you know it has to be a store-bought CD you put it in there it'll ask you if you want to record it and it'll record it to the hard drive and then once it records it you can go back in and delete the songs but if you hit this button there's nothing in there now but you can actually store your CDs in there. So, you know, if you have a CD that someone else has, borrow it, record it, and then give it back. Um, USB is the plug-in here. Now, this is an R. This has a DVD player, so you're going to get this part here. But this is the plug-in. This is the USB, which you can use a flash drive. You can charge your cell phone, um, iPod, whatever you need. This is the Lotex Aux plug-in. There's a power outlet here, and there's also a power outlet here. But all of them are controlled by here. Once you start plugging things in, it'll be a three-function button. It'll be the USB, the auxiliary, and then if you have a phone connected in with music, it'll let you Bluetooth stream it just by picking what you want to do. DVD to listen to the DVD. There's the DVD slot. You can also play CDs in there. And you can split what you want to do. So if the kids want to watch a movie and you want to listen to a CD you can do that if you want to listen to a song on the hard drive and they want to listen to a CD you can do that you can pretty much split everything except for you can't listen to one FM station and them listen to another you can't listen to XM while they listen to a different XM but pretty much other any other combination you can play and pause for the CD rear power I always call this if the kids are being bad turn it off um, you can lock them out you can also uh, change their source so you can actually uh, uh, pick what you want them to watch but if they're not agreeing on what to watch you can lock them out and turn the power off if you want and that's your eject for the CD you have dual climate control my temperature passengers temperature rear temperature this is my temperature side passenger side and then this is the rear temperature if I'm the only one in the car I can hit the sync button where's it at right there and I control all three climates and then I hit auto and it'll keep it at 72 degrees just like your house recirculate if you're stuck in traffic front defrost rear defrost and if you see that little thing that looks like a flag that's actually the mirror defrost so instead of having to scrape them off in the winter you just push the button and it'll defrost it fan speed up and down Heated seats on my side, low high off, passenger side, low high off, rear temperature, and then the lock. There are controls back there, down there. And like I said, if they're not getting along, lock it out, they can't control it. This is a touring pilot. It has navigation as standard, but you can also get this on the EXL with Navi. This wouldn't be here on the EXLX or EXL without. Um, basically you pick what you want here this is like your joystick so I can I can zoom in and out uh, as long as you go inside the black ones you can see the FM traffic and, it, and it's actually free on a Honda it's used on FM traffic a lot of the other makes and manufacturers uh, they use Sirius and um, yeah it's a subscription based after a certain period of time so it's free with Honda this is your map guide button which pulls up the map this is your destination and route button 
so you can pick where you want to go. You know, uh, um, Chinese restaurant, uh, ATM, hospital, wherever you want. You can program in your go home. And then if you put that over, you can do your Zagat. I live in Pittsburgh, so they don't really use Zagats. But uh, uh, at a bigger city, you probably can you can pick above what Zagat rating you want to go eat at. Here we have not as good of places to go eat. Ugh. I should move. Anyway, so info. This is your trip computer. You can also check your traffic incidents so you can see, you know, where the weather's bad, you know, if there's any road construction. Um, cancel takes you back. Your calendar, your clock and wallpaper, your setup where you can change the colors. Um, you can figure out how long you wanted to talk. When, when, the, when the, uh, the computer voice is giving you instruction, you can do minimal, more, things like that. Um, the audio controls, you can also hit this button here and pull up your audio controls. And you can adjust your bass and your treble and basically take that screen and shoot it up there and make it bigger. This is your dimming. You have a three set. It's basically the last place you set it, dim and out. But if you hit it, and then you can use this dial right here, and you can brighten it and dim it right there. This is your no phone is paired to This the is your phone button. Would you like to add a phone now? And then you flip over and say yes. And there's another video I have with programming a phone. I'm not going to go over that now, but the first time you hit that, and then you follow the instructions. It's not too hard. There is a big. Um, navigation book in your glove box. You should have got it when you bought the car and it's just the navigation. Um, it probably seems very overwhelming because it's a very thick book but it's not very hard. Um, pretty much anything you can say here will translate up here and I'll give you a couple examples. If let's say you wanted to find the nearest Chinese restaurant you pull this towards you. After the beep please say a command such as one of the Find nearest Chinese restaurant. And there you go. And you can go down through. And once you program in your phone, it'll give you the phone number. And you can actually see wherever you want to go. And call and see if they're there. Especially like if you're on vacation. And you're running out of gas and it's late at night. After the beep. Find nearest gas station. And there you go. And if you only have a Sunoco card, you can hit that. You can call their number, and you can see if they're still open so you don't make a wasted trip. But you can pretty much do anything you want that's computer controlled, like um, here. After the beep. Air conditioning on. Air conditioner on. There you go. After the beep. Passenger temperature 78 degrees. Passenger temperature 78 degrees. There you go. After the beep. Fan down. Fan speed down. After the beep. Radio on. Radio on. After the beep, FM 102.5. Radio 102.5 FM. So there you go. Not too hard. This is all in your book, but like I said, anything you can say to it, you can pretty much, uh, uh, it, it understands what you mean most of the time. Um, let me see, what else? No? That's the quick overview. Like I said, uh, not a very difficult car, even though it looks so, but once you get used to it, you'll be a, a veteran at it. Um, I only know this stuff because I'm in them every day, but it's not a very difficult car. Um, Honda puts the buttons in the same place most of the time, so uh, from, from year to year, you can always find exactly, you know, the buttons are usually in the same position.